Impulse, the Spanish word for reservoir. Good morning, and welcome to another beautiful day here in Chile. My friend Oscar let me use the car until today, so I figured I'd take advantage of it. And I wanted to come out here to this bridge. It's a famous bridge not too far away from the actual city of Linares, maybe about a 15 minute drive. And right beyond this bridge is a place called Ambalseancoa. Now, Embalse Ancoa is close to Los Beotos, where I was just last Tuesday. And you can see the video right up here. However, there's another Embalse Ancoa that people go to to swim and have fun. And right in this area, about five minutes from where I am right now, are where the fires were. And I wanted to show you the destruction that these fires had on this area. It was pretty incredible and really, really sad. But let me show you exactly what happened in this area where the super tanker came. And if you don't know what I'm talking about with these fires that I'm talking about, take a look at all of the news from last February and January about the fires here in Chile. But putting all of the politics aside with the topic of all of the fires that happened in Chile, I just wanted to show you all of the destruction that took place not very far away from Linares. It's maybe a 20 minute drive to get to where I'm at right now. And I'm maybe 10 kilometers away from the Embalse Ancoa where you go to swim, jump in the water. It's really, really beautiful. But you can see beauty on one hand and then you can see destruction right next to it. There's a beautiful river and right next to that, the destruction of all of these trees that were burnt. It was a scary time in Linares, but even more scary for the people who lived here. Some really, really sad stories came out of this, such as houses being burnt and all of your property burnt, but some incredible stories as well, such as the fire went around people's houses and it didn't burn their house. Incredible. But I did want to highlight this one last time because it is a part of our Linares history. And not only Linares, but also all of Chile. It was a sad time in January and February, but this is what it looks like now six months later and I hope it never happens again. So here's a prediction. When I'm older, there's no way that I'll be able to sit still. Instead of just going and getting a sunrise today from this beautiful spot, I had to go to the next place and now the next place. Right now, I'm in Embalse Ancoa. And this is one of the coolest places to come, especially in the summertime, because the water is crystal clear and it's a perfect place to go swimming. We also came here a couple of months ago to go repelling. There are some cool cliffs on the side of this river and you can repel into the water. It's really safe. But I feel like I'm going to get in trouble because I was supposed to go grocery shopping this morning and instead I'm out here in Embalse and Coma. But I hope you enjoy the views. I have to get back and church starts in an hour.
30 minutes to spare. Winning. Church service went really, really well. I always love Sunday because not only do I get to travel a little bit usually, but I also get to go to church. The other thing that I enjoy is going to get some fresh fruits and veggies right down the road from where we go to church. So, here we are. I feel like I've had this morning on my mind all day, and I think I figured out why. You see, in January and February, those fires that I showed you were a huge deal. They were all over the news. There was this huge super tanker that came all the way from the United States. There were other planes and helicopters that came from all over the world to help this big catastrophe of forest fires. And I'm not saying I have all the answers, but I haven't seen much news on these forest fires and what happened to them lately. And the one thing that I can't stop thinking about is, whatever happened to all of those houses and all of the things that were lost in the forest fires? I mean, there were entire towns that were completely and utterly destroyed. And I bring this up because oftentimes things like this that were such a big deal for a while then get thrown under the rug and nothing ever happens with it. I really hope and pray that something is happening with it and these houses are being rebuilt. I didn't see many houses that were new or rebuilt houses there. I did see a lot of houses that were completely destroyed with metal pieces completely filled with black still in that area. So that's why I'm wondering, has there been anything that has been done with all of these fires that happened six, seven months ago? And so I've spent the entirety of this afternoon trying to find some answers to my questions I have. Are the houses rebuilt? If they're not rebuilt, where are these families? And what happened to all of those appliances? Did the government or some other resource come in and help these people get new things? And the answer is somewhat surprising. One, they have been doing something. They have been trying to rebuild the houses and they have been giving some places back to the people. However, there are still a lot of people that don't have a new house, don't have a place to live, they're living with family, and it's really hard to rebuild all of these houses when you don't have all of the resources on hand. So it's kind of a mixed bag from what I've read. I'm interested though if you know anything about those fires that did happen and if you know people who were affected by them, do they have a new house, what is the plan in place? Because I'm still not sure after doing an entire afternoon of research trying to figure that out. I hope something's in place and I pray something's in place and I pray that all of those families affected have a house, but six, seven months later, I... I don't know. But I hope you guys enjoy going on adventures as much as I do and going to the mountains and checking the natural beauty out because I think if I owned a car I would constantly be in the mountains exploring new places, finding new places to eat and get ice cream like I did yesterday. So much fun to me. I enjoy it and I hope that you guys enjoy it too. But on to important business which is the shout out for today. This shout out is long, long overdue. And like many of you watching, and thank you by the way, this person watches my videos every single day, as soon as they come out. And he has two accounts, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but he has two accounts, and with those two accounts, he watches my videos once, gives it a like, and then with the second account, he also gives it a like when he watches it with his family later on in the day. Maybe some of you can relate with that, but I think that's really, really special. Thank you so, so much, Mark Henrich. I appreciate that. Mark Henrich just so happens to be Elisa's dad as well, my father-in-law. So thank you so much for watching my videos and being so excited about them and playing games while you watch them as well. I appreciate it. But with that being said, I hope you all have a great week. We'll see you guys next time for another adventure. Check me out on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and we'll see you guys next time. But for now, have a great week, and ciao, Pascal. Elise, are you mad that I was traveling all morning? No. Ah, oh, perfect.